Hi, and welcome to episode 77 of the Noble Character Crafts podcast. My name is Amy, and I am coming to you from eastern Nebraska, where I live with my husband and our five children. Today is Friday, September 27th, 2019. This is a podcast all about my crafty life, and today I have knitting, crocheting, quilting, and hand-dyed yarn to share with you all. A huge welcome to any new or returning viewers. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really hope that you enjoy this episode. You can find me online on Instagram and Etsy at Noble Character Crafts. And you can also get in contact with me through my email at noblecharactercrafts at yahoo.com. I will have links to the places that you can find me in the description box below, as well as the show notes for this episode can be found in the description box. I am currently hosting a make-along over on Instagram. It is called the Vintage Make-Along or Vintage Mal, and it is for any project or craft that you have been working on using a vintage pattern that was published in 1999 or earlier. It is wrapping up on Monday, September 30th, so there's just a few more days left for that make-along. However, you don't have to complete your projects, so if you would like to even start a project now, go ahead and start a a vintage pattern and just post a picture on Instagram using the hashtag vintage Mal and you will be entered to win a prize for that make along. So I would love to have any of you join. Thank you so much to everybody that has joined so far. It's been lots of fun to see the different projects that you have been working on and I am excited to see who will be the winners for that make along. So I will be announcing the winners of that make along on the next podcast but um, please do try to get your pictures posted on Instagram no later than Monday, September 30th. I have a few finished objects that I'm excited to be able to share with you all today. I was able to finish the affinity doily that I made as a wall hanging for this wall that's right behind me here. And this is a free pattern that was designed by Catherine A. White and it was published by Red Heart. I modified the pattern quite a bit by using a larger weight of yarn. So the original pattern calls for you to use crochet thread and I used a DK weight cotton and linen yarn. I used Knit Picks Cotlin in the ash colorway, which I don't have it with me, but I believe it is. No, I don't have any of it here, but it's a cotton and linen blend. I also went up in hook size to a F 3.75 millimeter crochet hook and I only completed about half of the pattern before it was a large enough diameter for me to be able to put it inside this ring that I purchased on Amazon. It is a 19 inch ring and last time I recorded a podcast I was basically at the same point I just had to do one more round attaching the doily to the ring. So that was super simple. In fact, I was able to get it done really quickly after um, I, I podcasted last. And I think that I misspoke, however. I believe the, the last round that I completed was round 16. And in the original pattern, it calls for you to chain these stitches in between the little points here. And I thought that it was, I, I think I had said that it called for you to do single crochets, but I think maybe I was thinking that that's just what I had decided to do in order to attach it to this hoop. So that is what I did. Um, On the 16th round, I just, I believe you single crochet into the top of each point here. And then the pattern calls for you to do 15 chains, but instead I did 15 single crochet stitches and just went around the hoop as I attached it, you know, as I worked, I attached it to the hoop. So that worked out really, really well. It um, stretched out the doily really nicely, I think. It fits on there really nicely. Um, It just worked out so well that the pattern had a good stopping point and was big enough to fit into this hoop, which was the largest hoop that I could find on Amazon or online in general. I looked just for a general search online and there were hoops that were larger, but I couldn't find anywhere to buy them. So um, like the company that makes this hoop also makes a larger hoop, but I couldn't find it for sale anywhere. So anyway, this one is a nice big size still. I'm happy with it. And like I said, the pattern just worked so well for me to stop at this point and it fits well into this hoop. So I'm super excited about it. I think it's so fun and I, you know, it's reminds me of like this cool spider's web and 
I just think it's great. I'm so excited to have something else that's handmade that I can use to decorate our home. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it where it belongs behind me. I did want to share that the way that I, I originally wet blocked it after I finished crocheting the main portion that I crocheted, I wet blocked it and pinned it out to a 19 inch um, diameter so that it would fit the hoop. Once I got it into the hoop and it was actually completed, I then went back and blocked it again using spray starch. So this is called Faultless Heavy Hold Ironing Enhancer Spray Starch. And I learned this trick from, uh, late, I used to work at an assisted living residence and one of the ladies that lived there um, had been crocheting for many, many years and she made lots of doilies using crochet thread. And this was what she used to block her doilies so that they would really hold their shape. It really gives the material a very stiff um, feel um, so that it holds um, its shape really well. And I really wanted that because not only because you normally would do that for a doily anyway, I believe, but also because I did use a heavier yarn for this wall hanging, I wanted it to hold its shape and not droop. Um, so I really wanted to make sure that I gave it a good blocking. So I just laid it out on a towel and I completely saturated it with this spray and let it dry. And it has a nice, um, stiff feel to it now. And I think it, I hope that it will hold its shape nicely, um, as it hangs there on the wall. So anyway, that's just a little tip for blocking doilies. I have another finished object that I'm super excited about. I was able to finish my heel toe do -si do socks. This is a beautiful pattern by Kay Litton of Crazy Sock Lady Designs. And I absolutely love these socks. This pattern was such a joy to knit. I am very confident that I will be making more of these because they just work so well for self-striping yarn. And it was just like the perfect amount of pattern to keep my interest but super super simple and easy to memorize and that's just my favorite my favorite way to knit socks is to have a little bit of pattern to keep my interest and I just think they're so cool I really really love them so I knit the medium size which was uh, casting on 64 stitches I used us 1 2.25 millimeter needles I worked about 17 rows of the one by one twisted ribbing as is called for in the pattern. Well, the pattern calls for a little bit more uh, length in the cuff, but I stopped where I did because the color change, the color was about to change. And you know, that was pretty close at 17 rows. The original pattern calls for you to work 20 rows of the cuff. But anyway, I did also change the um, pattern in that I decided to work the pattern on both the front and the back. The original pattern calls for you to only work the chevron pattern on the front of the sock, but I loved it so much I wanted to continue working the chevron pattern on the back of the sock as well. And I love how that turned out, so I'm really, really happy with them. I used uh, Knit Picks Felici in the Witch's Brew colorway for the main body here, and I love the colors in this, in this colorway. I think they're so fun. The contrast color that I used for the heels and toe is my own hand dyed yarn, Noble Character Crafts on my Pitter Patter base, which is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, fingering weight yarn in the Friend colorway. So it's just a light purple undertone with speckles of bright pink and blue and a little bit of green and purple. So I thought that that worked really well with the other colors in the striping yarn. I followed the pattern exactly for the heel and the toe. In fact, this is my, if I, if I knit a sock, pretty much every time I knit a sock, I follow Kay's pattern for heels and toes because they're just my favorite. Um, I mean, sometimes I'll do an eye of partridge heel, but still I kind of follow her numbers for um, how many stitches to pick up and things like that because they just fit me so well. And I pretty much always use her pattern for a toe. I can't think of a time unless, I guess I did make a couple of pairs of toe up socks. Um, so then I didn't, but if ever I make a cuff down sock, I always use her, her pattern for heels and toes from her other patterns that I purchased. So anyway, I, I highly recommend all of Kay's sock patterns. She's just, 
obviously by her name, Crazy Sock Lady. She is awesome at socks and I have loved every pattern I have made by her and I'm sure I will make many more of her patterns because I love them. So anyway, super, super happy with these. So excited about them. Purple is my favorite color, so these are just perfect. I love them. So happy with those. All right, on to my works in progress. The first one is my vintage make along, <laughs> my vintage pattern that I'm making. And it is the Fanfare, which is a cardigan by Hand Knits by Beehive. It is a vintage pattern from 1941. And I purchased that from an Etsy shop called Tangled Sundries. And I got in that with this pattern came a whole um, collection of patterns. Um, and so this was just one of the many patterns that I received in that collection, which was a very awesome bargain. I mean, I think you get I don't know, I should count how many patterns were in that collection, but you get several patterns and I think it was only like, it was less than $10 for the whole package, so great deal. Anyway, I have made a lot of progress. Oops, one of my buttons came undone. I've made a lot of progress on this cardigan, which I'm very excited about the progress I've made on this. Last time I recorded, I was still, my cardigan was still in pieces. I was working on, I had already made the back piece, and one of the front pieces, and I was working on the second front piece. So I was able to finish that, and then I wanted to get it seamed together so far and work on the neckband and the button bands. And I really wanted to get it to this point so that I could get a better idea of how it was going to fit. And I'm so glad that I have done this. So I, first of all, I just seamed it together using a mattress stitch, which... I, I love using a mattress stitch. I just think it's really easy and gives it a neat finish. So you can see the side seam and the shoulders. They look, I'm happy with how that looks, nice and neat. I went and picked up the neckband first and I just decided to do, this is an alternate from the original pattern because the original pattern has a curly Q design for the collar. I can show you a picture of it. This paper pattern is quite tattered now since I've been working on this for several months. But anyway, you can see here the curly Q design that it has for the collar, but that isn't quite my style. And I just wanted to do a simple one by one ribbing. And I did just eight rows of the one by one ribbing, and then I did a sewn tubular bind off. And I used the knit pit, or I'm sorry, the uh, very pink knits one by one tubular sewn bind off or something like that. I will link to that tutorial in the show notes, but I use that quite often for a tubular bind off and I really like how that finishes off the neckline. And then I went and picked up the button bands and I only actually did four rows of the button bands because I knew that this cardigan was already measuring a little bit bigger than the other sweater that I was trying to match this to. And so I didn't want to add any more width because I was afraid it was going to be too big. So I just did four rows for the button band and just did a simple yarn over, knit two together for the buttonholes. And I found these really cool buttons. I'm so happy with these buttons. I found them at Walmart. So they were very inexpensive, um, but I just think that they go so well with this cardigan. They've got a nice um, kind of a rhinestone type look to them. And I think they're really pretty, but um, subtle enough that they don't distract from the cardigan, but I just think they went really well and I thought they were really sweet. So I'm really happy with how the neck band and button bands went on and that worked out really well. However, I am not happy with the fit. I'm gonna go ahead and try it on and show you that it has turned out way too big. So hang on a second. Okay, so here it is. And it doesn't look too bad when I'm just like this. It's okay, right? But when I put my arms down, I just feel like this is way too baggy right here. And it looks a bit frumpy. It's just, there's a little bit too much material right here. So I think I will be happier with it. I mean, it's really not too bad looking at it, but I just think it looks a little bit 
a little bit too frumpy in through here. See all this extra material that's kind of like just gaping right there? I think it will be a bit more flattering if I just take it in an inch or two on the sides here. So I am just going to use my sewing machine and I'm going to sew it closed, right? Or sew it so it's thinner right here. And I think it is good that I did it at this point before I attach the sleeves because I think that that will, then once I put the sleeves on, that will be a nice neat finish, I think. And I have sewn a garment before when I made the Cassandra cardigan. Before I steeped that, I sewed the steeped edges before I steeped that open. So I'm not nervous that that will be a problem sewing these sides up. I'll just, you know, carefully pin it and sew it where I want it to be and I think I'll be a lot happier with it. So that's my plan. So anyway, that is one of the unfortunate things about making a, um, a garment from the bottom up and then seaming it together is that it's just really, really difficult to tell if it's going to fit well or not. Um, so it's not my favorite way to make a garment, but I'm pretty sure that most vintage patterns were made in this way. So anyway, it does give the garment more structure when it's seamed together like this. So that's good, but um, it is kind of frustrating to know that I, you know, that it's not fitting very well, but it's okay. I'm really, I'm pr quite confident that sewing it will work out well. Hopefully, <laughs> I sure hope so because that would be unfortunate if I sewed it and it didn't work out, but hopefully it will. I have started working on the sleeves. I am making them two at a time, which as you may remember from other podcasts, I like making my socks two at a time. And so I've never made sleeves two at a time, but I thought that this would be an easy way to work these up so that if I deviated from the pattern at all, I wouldn't have to try to remember how many rows of ribbing I did exactly. You know, sometimes it's kind of hard to tell exactly how many rows you did just by counting or things like that. So I thought it would just be a lot easier to make them both the same time so that they would be a perfect match. So I have, as you can see, started these already. The cuff, I did 30 rows of one by one ribbing using a US1 2.25 millimeter needle. And then for the main body of this cardigan, I am using a US2 2.75 millimeter needle. The gauge for this cardigan is 28 stitches to four inches. And I am using my own hand dyed yarn for this as well. It is on my gentle base, which is a fingering weight, 100% non superwash fine merino wool in the colorway Humble, which is just a semi solid light peach color. And yeah, I am really happy with how these sleeves are working up so far. As you can imagine, I have this lace pattern pretty well memorized at this point after working all the other parts of this cardigan. So it's super simple for me at this point to continue working on this. And I'm just increasing the pattern for this, um, for all, for both the back and the, both the sides and these sleeves. When you're doing the increase stitches, it's always on the first row of the eight row repeat for this lace pattern. So that makes it super simple to remember where to make your increases and to be able to count how many increases you've made because it just follows along with the lace pattern. So that's super nice. Anyway, these are working up really well. I'm very happy with them. I am marking my lace repeats with these stitch markers. These are the same stitch markers that are included in my knitting jewelry, my stitch marker necklaces. Those stitch marker necklaces are on sale right now on my Etsy shop if you're interested in checking those out. So um, they are about, I think, 30% off right now. So if you'd like to go check out my stitch marker necklaces, I would love to have you, if you would like one, I would love to have you check them out. Anyway, I think that's all I have to say about these um, or this project. I'm happy to be continuing working on it and I think I will try to sew up the main body of the cardigan this weekend because I'm anxious to see how that will work out. Hopefully it will work out well. <laughs> my next work in progress is in my 
own handmade project bag. And I want to say a big thank you to any of you that were able to catch the project bag update that I had in my Etsy shop this last week. I made a few extra bags with the extra material that I had of this pumpkin fabric. I made a few extra bags and put them in my shop and they got purchased pretty quickly. So that was nice to have those um, purchased from my shop. So thank you if you were able to get one of those. And in here is my Metanoia shawl, which is a beautiful pattern by Devin Ventry of Knitty McPurley. And I'm so happy with this shawl. It's such a joy to make. I am really, really enjoying it. So this is a top down shawl. And you can see it is growing quite well. You can see this cute little pumpkin pie project keeper or progress keeper on here. This is by Amanda of Little Bitty Delights. She's so talented. That's adorable. And that's marking where I was last time I recorded a podcast. So I was able to finish the horseshoe lace section, which I love that lacy section so much. I think that's such a beautiful design. I, again, am using my own hand dyed yarn for this project as well. The three different colors that I'm using are, well, this uh, lacy section was all done in my vineyard colorway, which is, as you can see, just a semi-solid burgundy wine colored colorway. And I'm actually all done using that for this pattern. That is my color A for this pattern. And I have almost half of my original skein left. So um, I, you, I think I have like 49 grams left. So this would be a great shawl to make if you have a few scraps of yarn, you know, half, maybe a, a little over a half of a skein of yarn or cake of yarn. If you had that sitting around, that's your main color. So that's the one that you need the most of and it only used a little over half. So that's great because this is a, you know, a nice sh sized shawl and yet it doesn't really take too terribly much yarn. You don't need three full skeins. So anyway, the second, uh, my color B is right here and that is my Plenty colorway. It is a variegated yarn. The base color is very similar to like a butternut squash color. This right here, this one. And then it's hand painted with lots of different fall themed colors. So there's oranges and reds, cranberries, burgundies, and there are some golden colors as well. So it's really a fun fall colorway. And I love how that has worked up both in this eyelet section. And then I've also been working it into this striped section down here. And the third colorway that I'm using is, I'm actually done with that as well. It is my living colorway. And this only took, I think 15 grams or maybe between 15 and 20 grams of yarn. So again, if you just had a mini a uh, skein or hank of yarn, you could use that for the color C for this shawl. So again, this would be so great for um, some scraps that you have on hand. So what I have left, I am just at the end of this striped section, and then I will be doing the border and I'll be done. The border will be all done in the plenty colorway. So it will all be done in this. And it's a beautiful lacy pattern. I don't think I have a really good picture of it. Yeah, you won't be able to see it very well on the photos that I have, but I wouldn't think it, that it will take me too much longer. Although of course the stitches or the rows are gonna get longer and longer. This is a semi-circle, I believe, or half circle shape. And so the way that it works is that you um, work several rows and then you have an increase row. And then you work several more rows. I believe maybe you like work this section and then you do a big increase row, and then you do the eyelet section and do a big increase row. I know that all of the horseshoe lace was done with the same stitch count, and then I just did a huge increase row, but right before I started the striped section. Again, all the stripes have the same stitch count. Um, and then I'm sure I'll do another increase row before I start the final border round. But anyway, that um, is how the construction of the shawl works up. So you know, obviously when you get to those increase rows, that really slows you down because you're increasing by a lot at a time. But I really enjoy 
uh, working up this shape of a shawl. I really like this shape of a shawl. So I'm very, very excited about it. And I just absolutely love the colors and I can't wait to have this done and be able to wear before autumn is over. I'm sure, I'm hopeful that I'll have it done soon. So anyway, very, very happy with this project. I am using the recommended needles, which are US 5, yes, 5, 3.75. Yes, a US 5 3.75 millimeter needle. All of the needles that I use are Chow Gu Red Lace. All right, so those are all of the works in progress that I have to share with you for my knitting or crocheting. And I do have some progress on the quilt that I'm making. Well, one of the quilts I'm making. I'm making a couple of quilts, but I haven't worked on the quilt that I'm making for the Little Miss Sawtooth Quilt Along. I haven't worked on that anymore, even though another clue has come out, but I've been focused on the other quilt that I am making for our king size bed that you can see the end of right here beside me. Yeah. So last time I recorded a podcast, I had just done one block of this Joseph's Pinwheel Quilt. So that was the first one that I had done at the class that I had taken at my local quilt shop in Blair, Nebraska. Um, and anyway, so you have already seen this one if you watched my last episode. And I have worked up a total of 12 squares now, um, quilt blocks. So I'll just go ahead and show you those. So um, half of the blocks are gonna have this darker gray color for the border. And then the other half are gonna have this lighter color, which just has a nice leafy pattern to it and is lighter gray. And so anyway, I'll just go through and show you the different ones that I've made so far. So you can get an idea of my fall themed color scheme. I really am happy that I included this one with the pumpkins on it. I think that's such a fun one. I like the little butterflies and the, there's a bee in there too. There's a little part of a bee there. This one, I've got lots of strings <laughs> all over the place, but I'll have to tidy them up as I work on this quilt a little bit more. It's really fun to mix and match all the different colors that I have. So I have 12 different patterned fabrics and 12 different solid fabrics that I'm mix mixing and matching. A couple of the project bags that I made had this uh, leafy, tan, leafy colored fabric for the lining. <laughs> I have quite a bit of that in my stash, so. This is, this uh, brown actually is one of the solids, but it does have a bit of a pattern to it. It's the only one of my solid colors that isn't actually completely solid, but I really like it. And one more. This one kind of has a Christmassy look to it, doesn't it? But I think it will be good in amongst all the other colors together. So, um, you know, again, I'm a very new knitter or <laughs> quilter. I'm rather new at knitting too. <laughs> anyway, um, I have only made one quilt so far. If you're a new viewer, I've only made one quilt. So this is really only my second quilt and um, Again, of course, nothing is perfect. My, I'm trying to tr get these points to match up in the center of my pinwheels, and I don't think any of them are perfect, but that's okay. I am just continuing to work on them, and hopefully I will get better as I continue to work on them. I also have the next 12 blocks in the works, so I just go through and <laughs> stitch all of these pieces together. So this is all in one long chain and this is just the first step to putting the blocks together. And this just goes on forever. It's, it would make a nice little bunting, wouldn't it? <laughs> so anyway, this goes on forever. I just have these, all these are, like I said, 12 different blocks all pieced together. So next step, I need to cut all of these pieces apart and put them together into the blocks and 
be on my way. So I did all of these with the dark gray background and then I will do 12 more all with the light gray leafy colored background like on this one. And then I will have all 36 of the blocks done that I need in order to make the king size quilt to fit our bed. So, you know, it's quite a, it's a lot slower process than the first quilt I made. These blocks are quite more difficult to piece together than the first quilt that I made, but that's okay. It's, um, it's really enjoyable. I'm really enjoying working on them. And even though they're not perfect, it's fun to continue to work on this project. So I'm happy about that. Okay, the last thing that I have to share with you is some yarn from my Etsy shop. Every time I record an episode, I like to share three different colorways that I think would work well together for a project. And this week, I have three new colorways to share with you, and I'm so excited about these. I'm really, really excited about these. They're so much fun. Oh, now I have little threads from my quilt all over me. <laughs> One of the downfalls to starting to sew a lot is that there's little threads everywhere. Anyway, I have three new fall themed colorways that I'm super excited to introduce to you all. And here they are. I'm so happy with these. So these three colorways are wilderness. So this has, as you can see, a deep burnt orange kind of color, kind of a coppery color underneath. And then it is painted and speckled with green and a bit of um, reddish color in there as well. Can I even find a spot? It is a deep colorway, so um, there's a bit of it. Maybe you can see there's a bit of the, oh, I have dye under my nails too. <laughs> um, anyway, there's a bit of uh, the reddish color coming through. Anyway, it's just a really deep colorway and I really really like it but yeah this this color that's painted on here almost looks black on screen but it's actually a really deep green so you can kind of see more of a green color coming through there and again this is called wilderness this colorway is called Thanksgiving and as you can see it's got a lot of tones of orange and tannish brown color and then it's speckled with some deeper orange and brown colors. So really, really love this one too. It kind of reminds me of pumpkin pie and just screams fall. <laughs> yeah. And then the last one is called Ornament of Gold. And as you can see, it's got a really, um, the undertone is very golden and even some lighter um, golden spots. And then it has some beautiful specks of some uh, deeper orange and browns and gold speckled on top as well. So I love the tones in this colorway as well. My daughter really loves this, which surprises me because she's usually just all about pink. And she asked if I would make her a cardigan in this colorway. We'll see. <laughs> it would be beautiful. I'm just surprised that she likes it because it's not something that, not a color that she usually gravitates towards. So she would look very pretty in it though. She's got blonde hair and blue eyes. So she would look great in it. Anyway, so I'm so excited about these three colorways. They would look great together or on their own, of course. I'm super excited to be offering some more autumn themed colorways in my shop. So all of my colorways are available on all nine of my bases in my shop at all times in any quantity that you might need for a project. So please don't hesitate to contact me if you have any questions or need any assistance with anything. I'm glad to help anybody out that might need it. So we have had a good couple of weeks. We have had a little bit of sickness and I have had some horrible back pain this last, well, last week was especially bad. This week's been a little bit better. I saw a physical therapist on Monday and she gave me some exercises that I am able to do here at home and they're quite painful, but they're targeting, you know, some muscles that I haven't been using <laughs> enough of. And so my back does feel a lot better. I just had pain in my lower left hand side of my back mainly. Um, and so anyway, I have been laid up quite a bit, icing it and putting heat on it and, you know, trying to baby it. I've been 
I got new inserts for my shoes and have been wearing a back brace sometimes, especially when I dye yarn and I'm on my feet a lot, I need to wear that. So that has been helping. Um, but anyway, that's been a little painful those last couple of weeks, but it is getting better. And I'm so happy that um, I was able to see this physical therapist. I've never seen a physical therapist before. And I think that I'm hopeful that it will really do me good. So I'm excited to be able to have found her actually go to church with her so um, that worked out really well um let's see what else we are have a family reunion that we're going to um in iowa uh, it's just a couple hours away from us tomorrow so i'm excited for that that's my mom's side of our family we'll get together with my aunts and uncle and cousins and everybody so that's exciting it's nice that it's just a couple hours away because my family lives about four and a half hours away on, in eastern Iowa. And so it's really a nice um, middle point between us and them for this family reunion. My uncle lives in near Des Moines, Iowa, and so that's near where we're meeting. So anyway, I'm excited for that. But other than that, I think that's all that I have for this week. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really hope that you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please feel free to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel if you would like. I would appreciate that so much. I hope that you all have a great week ahead. Thanks again for joining me. Bye-bye.